you want to be like Dragon Man, you got to dress like Dragon Man. Hey guys, uh, my name is Melissa. I manage Dragon Man's and I also own Modern Defense. This is the Dragon Man um, who started uh, this business 40 years ago with my mom, Terry, and I finally got him to agree to do an interview uh, because we've been receiving so many questions on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, on all these questions with Mel. So <clears throat> I finally got him to answer a lot that you guys have some that I have come up with myself. We don't have a lot of time, so we're gonna try to like answer, um, ask the most important questions for all of you guys out there. Uh, so, first Okay, of all, guys. Well, anyway, my name is Mel Bernstein, and uh, this was my daughter's idea. She says a lot of you guys on YouTube are asking a lot of questions on Facebook, and uh, uh, we're gonna answer some of the questions right now. All right, so to start off, where did you grow up? Okay, in Brooklyn, New York, bad neighborhood. Bad neighborhood. I learned I learned the fast way. Um, what did your yeah. parents do for a living? Uh, well, my mom uh, really was just a housewife, and uh, my dad was a, a chiropractor, and he taught in the school in the Bronx. But your mom was also a hustler, right? She, she owned a lot of businesses. She had a business in her basement. She was always coming up with new ways to make money, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, she used to buy and sell clothes and jewelry and, you know, stuff like that to make some extra money. And for a few years, she was actually an uh, electrolysist. Uh, that takes uh, uh, hair off your skin and doesn't grow back. <laughs> but she did, she did a lot of hustling. So I think, right. do you think that you got a lot of your work ethic from your mom maybe? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I found out real young. If you don't work, you don't make money. You don't make money. You don't have fun. You can't buy anything. Yeah. And your dad, was, a, was a, he worked in a shop as a teacher, right? Yep. He was a teacher and a chiropractor. So did you learn a lot of your shop skills maybe from your dad? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I, I only went to school uh, till it, to, uh, you know, till the ninth grade three times. I actually got kicked out of school. I don't have a high school diploma. And uh, the principal called my mom and dad up to the office and said, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bernstein, I'm sorry, but your son, he's not going to mount to anything. And then they put me in Roberts Technical Trade School in New York City on 59th Street uh, to learn mechanics and welding. And that's where I really uh, started learning a lot about mechanics. Okay, um, what were your interests as a child? Uh, well, I always liked uh, automobiles and motorcycles. In fact, I had my first pedal car when I was like four or five years old. I have pictures of me driving a pedal car. And as I uh, grew up, you know, I got bicycles and go-karts and uh, went up right up the ladder. So you always had like a mechanical passion, like an uh, interest in... Oh yeah, motorcycles yeah. I always I wanted like to be a mechanic. Yep. Okay. Were you ever interested in math or science? No. 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 Didn't appeal to it you. It was useless. Okay. Um, were you always sort of rebellious? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was growing up in Brooklyn, New York, on the wrong side of the street, and luckily, uh, um, I seen the light and I changed. A lot of my friends uh, are in jail. They're dead, uh, and uh, luckily. Uh, you know, I didn't go that route. Uh, when did you drop out of school? Um, well, I wasn't 16 years old yet, so they had to put me in a trade school. So I got uh, I, I got kicked out of school when I was 15 years old. Okay. And then um, you got drafted into the service, right? right. When yeah. I was 18, yep. Right. Vietnam were you, era. Were you happy about that, being like sort of this motorcycle uh, Well, rebel? I wanted to do my part, but nobody was happy getting drafted. Right, but now you had to like listen to authority and they told you what to do, which is probably something that you Oh yeah, like. and tell you the truth, the army really straightened me out. Two months in the army, I was a whole different person. Did you ever do drugs or alcohol? No, never, no, never. never. Do you think that that equates to... Uh, well, I tasted alcohol, but I really, I didn't like it. It tasted like brake fluid. No. Um... So do you think yeah. that that's why maybe you still feel really good in your, your old Oh, age? yeah. I'm in good shape. You guys would never think I'm 74 years old. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? Yeah, I'm in very good shape. Um, so, okay. So, like, starting now with the business, um, yeah. basically, like, what got you started initially into creating Dragon Man? So, first uh, of all, like, where did the name Dragon Man's come from? Okay. Well, the Dragon Man, the Dragon everything came from the Dragon Motorcycle. Uh, that I built the first one in 1967. 
and uh, we got a couple of pictures here uh, let me show you this is the dragon motorcycle I'm pulling a wheelie on route 110 in Amityville in fact my record wheel stand is a block and a half long the dragon bike weighs a lot so the back of the bike is very heavy so it's easy to pull wheelies and my last fin on the bottom is actually a skid plate and that'll stop me from uh, going over if it wasn't for the skid plate I probably wouldn't be here where did the dragon symbol come from okay in the late 60s well in the 60s everybody wanted to be wild and when I got out of the service they wanted to build choppers and uh, you know extend the front ends and uh, my idea to be wild was building a dragon bike and uh, then I started uh, Dragon Distributors and this is uh, my shop in Belmont, New York on Merrick Road see that? I, I really started on Route 110 in Amityville and then went to Belmore and opened up the shop and we did a lot a lot of motors see that? There's me and my son Joey which isn't he isn't with us uh, right now he passed away but uh, he was my right hand man we used to uh, do a lot of motors he used to take them apart glass beat everything lay everything out I used to machine everything and uh, both uh, me and Joey and another helper would uh, put motors together a total of over a hundred motors I used to do a year and I used to organize the upstate runs to Monticello once a month we used to go upstate uh, we used to rent a whole ski resort which they didn't use in the summer and uh, I used to lead about uh, two to three hundred motorcyclists up there. We used to have a great time. What made yeah. you want to open up a motorcycle rebuilding business? Uh, well, I would have never got in a motorcycle business if Holly Davidson was, wasn't so expensive. Right. All my friends had bikes were breaking and everything, and uh, they were turning, they were looking at me to uh, fix them. Right. right. So then I started fixing them, right? Because Harley Davidson charged so much so for much what you money. could do for half the price. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so you started that out and then um, basically... It went right up the ladder. Okay. Right. So you were uh, always... I, I worked for the Department of Public Works with Joe Rising okay. as a mechanic and a welder for 10 years. Me and Joe, we'd fix everything from front end loaders to lawn mowers. We were the head mechanics in a county garage. Wow. And he was like Island. your friend in high school, right? Uh, no, I met him after high school. After high school. But uh, he's, uh, he's coming out here in a couple of months to visit me, and we'll make a video with him. And he got you involved in hot rods and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, Joe Rising had the first hot rod. He's about four years older than me. Right. But there was like a whole yeah. group of you guys, like all doing these upstate runs and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, and yeah. We were... loved the hot rods and motorcycles, and that was my life. Right. And... So at what point did you want to just like move out of New York? And uh, well, New York's very like expensive to live. Uh, the cops over there are pretty mean. They give you a ticket for anything. Mm -hmm. In fact, I lost my license like three times. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I actually got a, a ticket for driving a float without a permit. Oh, God. You know, with the dragon bike. So, really, a lot of restrictions, yeah. a lot of regulations. And, and uh, you know, uh, I didn't pay the, a lot of tickets, and then they put a warrant out for you. So, one day I got arrested. I got pulled over. There was a warrant out, so I got arrested. They brought me to Mineola Jail. And uh, the next morning, the, uh, the judge goes, Mr. Bernstein, you're driving around without a license. I go, I go, I don't want to be a wise guy, sir, but two weeks ago, you took it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was laughing. That's funny. Yeah. So, yeah, let's take a break. You guys could, uh, you know, set up the range? Yeah. Okay. Look busy. <laughs> okay. So at this oh, ask, point, me, ask me how uh, the motorcycle business, uh, you know, uh, took off. Yeah. Okay. Um, so at this point, you were probably pretty successful with your motorcycle business. You decided that this is something that you wanted to do because you learned a lot of this mechanic in trade school. Right. Um, when did it really take off? Okay. When it really took off is when I started doing the mail order business. Okay. I advertised in Street Chopper Magazine, Hot Bike, and Easy Rider. Oh, wow. And I still have some of my first catalogs. My first catalog it was only like 35 pages, and this was really all machine work. You see that? That's my double engine bike on the back, and a dragon bike on the front, and I mailed thousands and thousands of these out all over, really all over the world. I, I was getting jobs from uh, countries from overseas, and this little catalog uh, boosted my business about 500%. Wow. Yep. Was that your idea? Yeah. You just yeah. thought that. Mail order. Yeah, okay. because other places were doing mail order. Okay. So I, but nobody was doing mail order machine work. 
Right. And yeah. and you had to get a lot of machines, though, to do the work. So right. most of your money that you would make from your day job, you would spend probably building up your business. Yep. Yeah. I buy one machine after another. Right. Um, so at what point did you move out to Colorado and you said, I'm going to uh, just start? Well, life. almost everybody in New York really doesn't want to live there. Right. <laughs> So uh, I started looking around, you know, taking a couple of like three days off and flying around here, flying around there. And really, uh, Colorado, this is really the best place to live. And you did that with Terry? Uh, yeah. With mom? Yep. Um, if so. you move up, uh, you know, north, it's too cold. Right. If you move down south from Colorado, it's too hot. And this is really, I found the best place to live. And this piece of property that we bought, we started with 40 acres, was unzoned property. Right. That means you could do whatever you want, put buildings up, anything you want to do without a permit, which I couldn't believe. Because in New York, if I wanted to put a sign in front of my store, I had to get a permit. And then every year, you have to renew the permit. Right. And you can move yeah. wherever you wanted because you had a mail order. Mail, mail order, order, right. Okay, cool. So, but it was hard at first in Colorado. Oh, very hard. Yeah. Yep. In fact, the build that I put my building up lied to me. Uh, you know, I, I paid the whole thing cash and he's telling me, oh yeah, yeah, it's almost done. Uh, all we have to do is the electrical work. So anyway, I couldn't wait to move out here. So I rented the first U-Haul truck, loaded it up with machines and uh, came out here and the walls weren't even up. Boy, did I have a big argument with him. And... Wow. Uh, you know, he really lied to me. You know why? Because I paid him all the money already. So what's the rush putting the building up? You know, that's the way some people are. And you took a big risk, though, because you yep. moved out to the middle of nowhere. Right. There was, I mean, Colorado Springs wasn't even built up yet. And you came from New York, a bustling city where people were um, automatically going to see your signs just driving on the highway. Whereas here, they, they don't even know that you're out here. That's right. It was very, very hard. In fact, back then, there was no internet. I had to wait seven months to get in the yellow pages. Right. And to call out here from town was long distance. Imagine if you had Facebook back then. No. No, but it would have been great. Oh, if they did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was no Facebook, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually, you actually tried to sell your property. Right. right. I, yeah, after the first eight or nine months, uh, I really couldn't take it anymore. You know, hardly nobody was coming. Uh, the phone wasn't ringing. Uh, I'm used to all these people from New York coming in, you know, 75, 100 people a day. And uh, I, uh, I almost moved back to New York, right. but I couldn't sell the property. So I ended up staying here. And you and mom, even mom kind of wanted to move back. She was just like... Right. It was just too boring. It was too boring. In fact, in this town 40 years ago, they didn't even know what a bagel was. They didn't even have a pizza shop, you know. So why did you stay? How, uh, what well, we you... couldn't sell the property. I spent all my money moving here. And putting a building up you know we did everything without a loan and uh luckily i still kept my store in new york so it would have been pretty easy for me just to take everything and go back to the store but then i'm leaving all this abandoned and uh you know would have got vandalized and right we decided just to stick it out because you had to right um okay so moving on so it, it initially started with your mail order business you guys actually lived here in the store until you can make enough money to buy a house and all right. that kind of stuff um, you, you actually tunneled, uh, water eight miles away, yep. uh, not tunneled it, but you had a, yeah, we had water. a lot of trouble with the well, right. see the, the property here, the land is over 500 feet higher than Colorado Springs mm -hmm. and the well had to go down almost 700 feet and it was sucking up a lot of sand and always every two weeks we'd have trouble, no water, no water, couldn't use the bathroom, couldn't get a drink. So it was really expensive. You were putting yeah. all of your money that you're making just into trying to make it and survive. Right. Right. In fact, nobody 10 miles out of town, uh, like I was, had three-phase electric. It cost me $13,000 to get the electric company to bring the cable out here, a three-phase, so I could run my machines. Did, so, all of, did all of your friends back home think that you were crazy doing this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 90% of them. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So... When did it start to, start, start to evolve into a gun store, a shooting range, all that yeah. kind of stuff? Well, uh, mom and I were always into the guns, and uh, people, they started coming out. They go, hey, you got all this property. Could we, uh, could we shoot our gun out here? That's how it started. Right. So uh, I, I finally got enough money to buy a front-end loader, and I dug, a, you know, like a hole out there mm -hmm. and with a berm. And, and what did uh, mom say? Huh? What did okay. mom say about the What'd hole? What'd she say? Well, I rented, I rented an earth mover. Mm -hmm. It was $125 uh, an hour. You know, that was a lot of money. Now it's probably 250 an hour. Right. 
But uh, she goes, what are you spending all that money digging that hole for? You're never going to get it back. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's the most profitable profitable yeah. hole that you ever made. That's right. Yeah. The definitely. gold mine. Yeah. So did you always like guns? Oh, yeah. 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 New York had a, a revolver and stuff. Right. It, it took 13, 13 months in New York to get a carry permit, and I could only go four places. Jeez. Yeah, I, it's probably a lot stricter now. So now you can own guns, yeah. and when did you when did you decide that you're going to sell guns? Uh, well, I started buying machine guns and everything, right? And then I go uh, to mom, I go, well, why don't we just, you know, get our Class 3, uh, you know, gun uh, right. permit. So you always had, like, this entrepreneur right. kind of mindset. Right. So, uh, I, you know, when I got my license, I wasn't really going to sell guns to the public. I got it so we wouldn't have to pay the two hundred dollars for the tax stamp. Right. So I get the guns automatically. Right. And faster. <clears throat> we don't have to wait ten months. Okay. Yep. Um, all right. Let's see some questions. Uh, so there's a lot of other questions here. Yeah. Um, and then what? So what really um, incited your passion? Uh, started your passion for military collecting? Uh, well. You know, after the army, I was always uh, into military right. stuff, even before. Right. I liked the big, heavy trucks. I liked the way they worked, the half tons, uh, the three quarters. I liked the, you know, the, uh, the half tracks. So uh, let's get this straight. So you dropped out of school in the yeah. ninth grade. Your principal said that you would never amount to anything, but right. yet now you're basically like a walking encyclopedia. Right. So is it just that you only want to learn stuff that you're interested in? Right. It's yeah. not what they teach you in school. It's what you want to learn. Right. So right. now you you know so much about military history. Do you do it more for like the veterans because you think that it's honorable yeah. to, 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 you know, remember yeah. them? Or do you, I mean, because you kind of take one man's hobby and kind of like really run with it because most people just have a couple of things that they collect, but you have a whole museum. Right. Well, well, we didn't have an idea to make a museum back then. It was just like a big storage shed. Right. You know, I started buying, when I got about 15 vehicles, I said to mom, I go, uh, why don't we uh, put in to get a, uh, you know, the 501-C3 uh, tax no exempt uh, and try to get stuff from Fort Carson. Right. So uh, it actually took it two and a half to three years to get the 501-C3 uh, status. And then I send the paperwork to the uh, commander at Fort Carson. He sends me a letter back. I have to send a letter to uh, Washington to get vehicles. And they sent me a, a book about three inches thick. Uh, all the restrictions that they, they want a cement floor. Uh, they want a sprinkler system. They want a public bathrooms. I mean, there was so much, it would have cost $2 million to fix up the building to make it, uh, you know, legal uh, for the government to give me stuff. Wow. So I ended up uh, throwing the book away and I did everything myself. That doesn't surprise me. Right. Um, so now you have over 98 running vehicles, 98,000 square feet uh, or 78,000 square feet. And uh, that's why the museum's not in chronological, chronological order is because it wasn't intended to be a museum. Right. Yeah. If I like, had to do it all over, I would have started with the American uh, Revolution, the Civil War, World War One. Right. You know, right up the ladder. Right. right? right. So it's really, it's all mixed up. Do you hope that yeah. it gets to that one day that you, that maybe I rebuild it? Yeah. In that chronological Well, chronological maybe one order. day you put up a real nice building, you know, with heat in it, and we could keep the museum open. Uh, all year round. All year round. That would be great. Yeah. So now, a big question, and I'm going to start asking some questions that your fans have for you. Okay. Um, the number one being, where did you get all your money from? Okay, working hard. Working hard. Working when hard. I moved here, I worked seven days a week for almost 20 years in a row. Right. Now, who does that? So and No you, vacations, nothing. You still work. Yeah. Every single day. Yeah, six and a half days a week. Right. I take half a day off, and then after the five or six hours, I have nothing to do. <laughs> so, I mean, don't you ever just want a day off where you get uh, to, like, lounge and watch TV? Uh, eh, not really. This is what I like to do. Okay. Yeah. So, you, you love it. That's right. what keeps you good. Yeah, no, no, it's no, not no, even no. like working every day. It's almost like playing. Right. And yeah. you don't spend your money on boats or, like, trips and stuff like that. No, that's so. a waste of money. Okay. Yeah. Just remember, guys, a day without working... Is a day wasted? Uh, I had a lot of pressure on myself growing up. No, okay, well, let me show them a picture of mom here. Well, first of all, this is my mom. Her name is Edith, and uh, she helped me uh, with the place out here. When I moved here, I actually ran out of money. Imagine that, Dragon Man running out of money. <laughs> and uh, she, she lent me $60,000, which I paid back every penny. 
Right. Okay. Yeah, and Terry, my late wife. See that? And if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have got this far. Because she did all the paperwork and kept me out of jail. That's right. <laughs> kind of like what I do today. That's right. <laughs> That's what Melissa does today. Um, do you feel like you would have gotten this far without Terry? No, I wouldn't have. Nope. Um, all right, so... A lot of paperwork to do when you're in a gun business. A lot. Um, all right, so what else? So here's some questions from your fans. Um, that's pretty much all that I have for you. I have a couple last questions that I'll ask at the very end. Um, but from one from Ben Barrett, any advice on becoming a successful business owner and leaving the corporate grind? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the way I got ahead is uh, you got to set your goals and whatever you do, try to beat the competition's price. That's what I do. Keep the prices down and you do volume and everybody will come to you. And don't quit your day job, right? Right. Kind of do it on the side until it becomes a right. full-time job. Yeah. Um, John Watley, what is your favorite motorcycle of all time? Well, Maybe of course, the, uh, the dragon, dragon bike, bike and my double engine bikes. In fact, let me show you a picture of my double engine bikes. Here, this, this picture is, I don't know, probably, I don't know, 50 years, 50 years old. That's my first double engine bike I built. I welded two Harley Davidson frames together. I didn't even have money for a welding machine. So I guess welded the frames together with coat hangers. That's the way I made the first Dragon Bike too. In fact, uh, it was too hard to kick over, so I put compression releases in the front head, started up the rear motor, closed the compression releases, hit the magneto switch, and the front motor would start. That's American ingenuity and technical know-how. <laughs> okay, so right from there, I went up the ladder. Okay, this is my next double engine bike. That's my brother Jay next to me. See that? Every double engine bike got better because I learned a lot more. Okay. Okay, this is in Colorado here, my third double engine bike. This one even got really good. In fact, that went to France Holly Davidson in Paris. A guy named Frank bought it. It got shipped out. Every double engine bike I bought, people would come up to me, offer me a lot of money, and I'd end up selling it. Okay, this is uh, me on Platt Avenue driving the double engine bike because all three of them were street legal. See that? That turned a lot of heads. And here's my brother Mike Bernstein's drag bike. Nitro burning drag bike he built over 40 years ago. So we were really into the motorcycles back then. And I still am. In fact a lot of a lot of uh, newspapers uh, do articles about me and probably uh, I was probably in about 40 uh, motorcycle magazines and probably about 60 uh, newspaper articles on me. In fact, welcome to Colorado, the tourist guide. This is the tourist guide. Look who they put on the front page. The dragon bike. Unbelievable. They gave me like four pages. They tell you about all the places to visit in the state of Colorado and they put my bike on the front page. I'm on it. Okay, another question? All right, um, uh, from Noah Witka, Wika, what is your favorite machine in your machine shop? Oh, the Miller machine. The Miller machine. Yeah, I have 11 of them. All right, um, Dave Cerrone, when did you get your, t your tattoos and are they significant uh, to your events? Oh, I started getting them, uh, you know, uh, when I got drafted in the service. How many tattoos yeah. do you have? 136. Okay. And you have one for your mom, right? Yeah, mom, your first dad, mom, dad. Uh, my brother's names are on my arms. Yeah, yep. your brothers. Um, let's see, Doug Spencer, to, out of the museum, the bikes, the hot rods, the guns, what do you enjoy doing most? Shooting uh, guns? Really, everything. Everything, Yeah. all at once? Everything, Okay. at least everything, once a day. <laughs> okay, from Eric uh, Pavon Jr., yeah. have you ever taken a vacation and uh, where? When I was younger, I used to take vacations, so I've seen it all. And right now, I don't have to take vacations because if I want to go somewhere, I just send for, I send for the uh, video. Yeah. <laughs> I could take the vacation <laughs> on my living room. Um, Andrew Noble, yeah. do you ever sleep? Uh, only about five hours a night, really. I can't sleep late, long. Thomas Moore, what is yeah. your favorite TV show? Uh, well, I'm, I watch Orange County Choppers. Um, you like that, American Pickers? American Pickers. Uh, the History Channel. 
Yeah, 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 the History Channel, uh, Discovery Channel, you know, all the hot rod shows and stuff. All right. Uh, and so Jesse James. I used to watch Jesse James. I don't know why he don't have his uh, show going. I'd love to be on it. Um, all right. So yeah. um, how many mach how many guns do you have total to your name? You're the most armed uh, in Almost 7,000. 7,000. What's your favorite gun to shoot? And Well, I like the big guns, you know, like the 50 caliber machine yeah. guns. I have 16 of them. In fact, talking about guns, let me show you my first weapon. When I was 10 years old, my dad... Got me the speedy gun. Okay. Isn't that amazing? Daisy, I still have it. And he wouldn't let me shoot it until uh, I, you know, I'd go outside with him. You know, upstate New York. You can't shoot him in Brooklyn, New York, because there's no room. And uh, let's see if it still works. Okay, I'm gonna cock it. Okay, BBs are still in here. So I have this gun for 63 years. See the target over there? Okay, there it goes. Try it again here. Yeah. Huh. Well, I guess it's not working. You can just put a hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so it is my first BB gun. And what we're doing now is we're manufacturing our own guns. The Dragonfire rifle. See that? The heaviest barrel on the market. Look at that custom-made uh, flash suppressor. Adjustable stock. See that? Uh, it's got forward assist. I'm having my, uh, my own uh, magazines made. See with the Dragon on there? And uh, the serial number on this one is number one. I already sold the first 90. The first 10 I'm keeping for my collection. And uh, we're expecting uh, the beginning of next week uh, another uh, batch that we're going to st start selling. Uh, the manufacturers that make me all these parts, uh, they all have uh, military contracts, and uh, for me to order a hundred guns uh, to them is nothing. So I actually have to wait till they have time to make the parts for me. That's why uh, things uh, are taking so long. But uh, I should have the next batch next week. The Dragonfire 223556, the heaviest barrel on the market. Eight to one twist, chrome barrel. Very nice. Okay, next right. next question. So getting down to the last couple of questions, why do you wear a Dragonman shirt every yeah. day? Um, that's basically like all your closet consists of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because I'm very proud to be able to wear this shirt, and uh, I'm proud of uh, the business. Did and, you ever think you were going to get this far? Uh, no, never. I went way past my expectations. In fact, I only have two Dragon Man t-shirts. I have the yellow one and the black and, and the, uh, the white and red one. Right. I have two, so while one's being washed, I wear the other one. Right. Makes okay. sense. Okay. Yeah. And if you guys want to order one of these, you know, just uh, contact my uh, daughter, 719-683-2200, or it's on our website. Go to the website. And uh, if you want to be like Dragon Man, you got to dress like Dragon Man. <laughs> All right. Um, last just remember, question. they're not bulletproof. So, let's see, what do you hope becomes of Dragon Man's long after you're not here? Right. Well, in my will, I want to be uh, stuffed illegally by a taxidermist and put in the oldies room on my dragon bike. And, you, and when, you know, people come, just tell them it's a wax dummy. But uh, I just hope everything just keeps going. Uh, my daughter's going to take over, and uh, I'm sure she's going to do a great job. I'll try. I'm good for another 20 years. He's probably going to outlive all of us, so just be prepared. Um, all right, yeah. that's it. So um, last thing that I'm going to say is that for any questions that we didn't have, we might be doing an Instagram live stream uh, this weekend for anyone who wanted to ask a question that I didn't ask, and you can have your chance to ask the Dragon Man anything that you want. And uh, I just want to say thank you to my dad for finally agreeing to doing this. I know that he thought that it was a little bit more boring than some of the videos that you typically do. There's no shooting guns in this video and stuff like that. Right. So we'll get right back into that after this video. But I'm just trying to answer a lot of questions that you guys have out there. So now hopefully they're answered and we don't have to do this again. There you go. There you go. Okay. Well, so. it went pretty good. Hope you guys liked everything. Yeah.